So in part two, we will be taking the term sheet toggle schedule we were just looking at and adding it to a financial model. And here we have one of the LBO templates pulled directly from a simple model.com. And to add the worksheet from another workbook, press Alt H O M. And we're going to move the sheet to the LBO model example. And we'll move it to the end of the workbook and create a copy. And press Enter. And now we have the schedule in the appropriate workbook. So let's link it to this model. First, we'll go over to Debt Schedule. And we're going to be linking this to the supporting schedule for senior debt. Now, to make sure that one of the columns on the term sheet toggle has these current inputs, we'll note that the term debt is in the amount of $30 million, that the interest paid is 5%, and that amortization is equivalent to 12.5% in the first year, 125 in the second, and then 15% in the next three years. So let's make those adjustments quickly. 30 million, then 12.5, 12.5, and 15% for the remainder. And now we'll link these inputs under model to the senior debt schedule. Let's start with interest expense. Link to our cash interest rate. Press Enter. Next, we want to link up to scheduled amortization. Press Enter. And rather than do this over and over again, I'm just going to copy Term sheets inputs exclamation point D2 and then paste it and add the last digit. And since these are no longer inputs, we'll select it. Press Alt H H N to remove shading and Alt H F C to change the text to black. Do the same thing for the interest rate. And finally, we need to link the amount of the loan. But we have to do this at the original source. So to find the source, press Control Open Bracket, which takes us to sources and uses on the three financial statements. But again, you'll note that this is not an input. So press Control, open bracket again. And here on the Sources and Uses tab, we have Senior Debt with yellow shading and blue text to indicate an input. So we'll press the equal sign and then tab back over to our term sheet toggle and select the value in cell D10. But before you press Enter, note that here we have $30 million and our figures in the model are in thousands. So to make the appropriate adjustment, We'll divide by a thousand. And then, of course, change the formatting so it doesn't appear as an input with Alt H H N to remove background shading and Alt H F C to change the text to black. Now, what I want to point out quickly is that every time we change the senior debt sum, the amount of common equity invested will change with that figure. So this will have a direct impact on our returns, which we can measure on the tab Exit Analysis. So let's look at how quickly this allows us to evaluate different term sheets. On the Term Sheet Inputs tab, we're going to take the toggle, press Control X, and then go back to the Exit Analysis Worksheet and press Control V. So now we have our term sheet toggle on the Exit Analysis tab. Let's zoom out a little bit so that we can view the return profile for the common equity, which you'll see currently shows an IRR of 20% and a cash multiple of 2.5 times. And with this toggle, now we can cycle through our term sheets to see how this changes our returns. So the second term sheet actually drops the IRR. The third term sheet drops it even more so. 
The fourth causes the IRR to rise, but only slightly, and it's still not better than the first term sheet. And the fifth is attractive, but still not as good as term sheet number one, which gives us the highest return. And frankly, that makes a lot of sense. If we go back to our term sheet inputs, you can see that lender one was willing to provide the largest loan at the lowest interest rate, which naturally enhances your returns. But we're not quite done yet. You still have to assess risk. So we're gonna go back to the exit analysis tab We'll delete term sheet input, or rather the text for term sheet input, and then press Control X to move the toggle to the worksheet labeled Debt Ratios. We can paste it here in the upper right hand corner, and we'll zoom out again. Once more. And I want to point out our total debt service coverage ratio down at the bottom in row 40. And what you'll note is that we need to maintain a minimum debt service coverage ratio of 1.25. But with the terms provided by this lender, we're in default in the first year, with a total debt service coverage ratio of 1.2. So again, we can cycle through the options to evaluate which of these will be the best fit. And what you may have noticed as we ran through all the other options is that none of the other term sheets put the company in default based on our projections. So it may be that you need to sacrifice some of the upside you achieve with term sheet one to feel a little bit more comfortable about your margin of safety running the business in the future. And really how much coverage you need is a function of how comfortable you feel about your projections. How certain are you about the future of that business? If you anticipate a lot of volatility, you may want to go with option three, because even though it doesn't allow you to maximize your returns, you have a low cash interest rate, zero amortization in the first two years, and the least amount of debt to pay down overall. All right, team, I hope that's helpful. That's it for now.